Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the Diamond Dart Trainer makes its first flight. The Navy looks over a new training helicopter. Drone detection is tested at JFK. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's May 19th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Earlier this week, the turbine-powered Diamond Dart 450 took off for its first flight. The Dart 450 is claimed to be the first all-carbon fiber tandem two-seat civilian and military trainer with side stick control and pneumatic ejection seats. By the way, Dart is an acronym for Diamond Aircraft Reconnaissance Trainer. The plus 7 and minus 5G aerobatic plane has a maximum takeoff power of 500 horsepower provided by its AI 450S turboprop engine and 5-bladed MT propeller. The avionic system is provided by Garmin and is claimed to have a maximum fuel endurance of 8 hours plus reserve. Within the first 60 minutes of first flight, speeds between 60 and 200 knots indicated airspeed had been tested at various altitudes. Expected top speed is 250 knots true airspeed. Diamond Aircraft Chief Designer Clemens Nappert said, We achieved our target from the first drawings to the first flight in one year. I'm already excited about what comes next. It looks like the Navy will get a new helicopter for training purposes, as the Augusta Westland AW119 single-engine helicopter, variant designated TH119, was introduced during the Navy League Sea Air Space Exhibition in Washington, D.C. The aircraft, specifically designed for military training customers, primarily the U.S. Navy, the new version has capabilities and features differentiating it from the proven AW-119KX commercial helicopter while keeping certification advantages. Now, the TH-119 will be built at the company's Philadelphia facility. It's reported that the TH-119 maintains redundancies on several key systems while featuring a dual display Genesis aerospace cockpit. That gives flexibility to instruct from either seat and the option for the VFR and IFR operations. Some of the other features include a 180 degree adjustable trainer observation seat at the base of the instrument panel, a night vision compatible cockpit, reinforced skids with replaceable skid shoes, a cargo hook, and a higher fuel capacity that allows hot refueling. After the break, the FAA and others explore drone detection technologies. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send us an email to jim at aerol-news.net. The FAA and its government, industry, and academia partners have joined forces to evaluate drone detection technology at the John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York. Beginning May 2nd, the FAA conducted evaluations at JFK to study the effectiveness of an FBI UAS detection system in a commercial airport environment. Five different rotorcraft and fixed-wing UAS participated in the evaluations and about 40 separate tests took place. The JFK evaluation involved extensive government interagency collaboration and cooperation from industry and academia. The test expanded on research performed earlier this year at Atlantic City International Airport. The fiscal year 2016 appropriations law mandates that the FAA continues research into detection of UAS in airport environments. The agency has continued to formulate an interagency strategy to evaluate detection systems in a variety of airport environments. 
It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Arrow Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. In the last five years since the XPRIZE was won, it's been an incredible roller coaster ride. We have had an incredible suite of opportunities to create new prizes both in space exploration and in other areas like energy and life sciences. Being able to say that the XPRIZE Foundation is one of our partners is truly an honor. It all started when Dr. Peter Diamandis had a dream of providing a prize to urge private business to find a way into space. His prize became funded by the Ansari family and the Ansari X Prize, challenge teams from around the world to build a reliable, reusable, privately financed manned spaceship capable of carrying three people to 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface twice within two weeks. The prize was awarded in 2004, and along with it, a brand new private space industry was launched. The Ansari X Prize turned into a foundation that now sponsors numerous X Prize endeavors. The winning of the competition itself is interesting and compelling. These X Prize projects must meet a number of criteria, not the least of which is to be bold and audacious and to shoot for a goal that has yet to be a success. The prize should inspire hope through a vision of a better future where winning teams are the proof of the world's seemingly impossible problems can be solved. For a detailed account of the original and sorry X Prize that led to private industry's first flight into space, be sure to read Jim Campbell's highly illustrated book, Beyond the Blue. After these messages, City of Cleveland gets hit with an FAA fine. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The city of Cleveland agrees to pay a fine of $200,000 to settle an FAA action against operations at the Hopkins International Airport. The FAA found that the snow removal process and procedures fell short of FAA standards. Oak Ridge National Laboratory and Piedmont Propulsion Systems recently concluded their successful anti-icing research. The project's purpose was to develop surface treatments that will inhibit the formation of ice on turbine blades, aircraft propellers, and wind turbines. The Airline Pilots Association continues to object to the tentative approval of Norwegian Air International operations in the United States of America. In a filing, ALPA claims the U.S. government failed to examine whether the approval was consistent with public interest. The FAA has issued a safety alert for operators regarding the carriage of lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries. The alert relates to shipping restrictions in aircraft cargo compartments, and air carriers are encouraged to notify shippers of the alert requirements. Banyan Air Service has approved as a dealer and installation facility for Advent Aircraft Systems STC for the GPS Digital Anti-Skid Braking System. The STC for King Air 300B 300C aircraft equipped with Collins ProLine GPS 4000S or Garmin G1000 430W 530W avionics 
Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The winner of the 2016 Team America Rocketry Challenge is the Space Potatoes Rocketry Team from Bellevue, Washington. They bested 100 of the top student rocketry teams in the country to take home the gold. The five student team outsourced nearly 5,000 students on 789 teams that participated in this year's competition from all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. The Space Potatoes team members were awarded more than $20,000 in scholarships and funds for their school. The students were required to build a rocket that flies exactly 850 feet and safely returns with a payload of two raw eggs within 44 to 46 seconds. At the national final, students were required to adjust their rockets on the fly to hit a new flight and duration parameters for a second round of launches. In July, the Space Potatoes will travel to London, courtesy of the Raytheon Company, to represent the United States at the International Rocketry Challenge, where they will compete against teams from the United Kingdom, France, and Japan. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. From the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource, always have an out.